Hi. Hey there. Welcome to A Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I am laser focused on the biggest story today, which is from yesterday, which is that three weeks from now on June 14th, The Late Show is coming back to the Ed Sullivan Theater in a triumphant return we're calling The Late Show Vax in Action and an immunity theater production of the state of reunion with a live body out of the audience. Enough. I'm so excited, and apparently so are you, because last night at 11.40, tickets went live on our website, and we got over 20,000 requests in the first 20 minutes, <laughs> 1,000 clicks a minute. What am I, Korean supergroup BTS? No, but they are my guests tonight. Love. <laughs> so, while we're already sold out for June, scientists are predicting a surge of other months later this year. So if you're fully vaccinated, go ahead and bookmark this link for tickets and come watch the show in person. The first two rows will get ponchos because I will be openly weeping with joy. Now, I'm not the only one spreading news about me. This morning, Politico's New York Playbook plugged our show, but, and this is real, they ran it with a small typo. It's subtle, <laughs> but see if you can spot it. Stephen Colbert's Late Show will return anti-Semitic, all-vaccinated <laughs> studio audience on June 14th. What? That is horrible and totally wrong. Our audience will not be anti-Semitic. I'm not sure where this came from, but I'll check with our new publicist, Marjorie Taylor Greene. <laughs> Speaking of whom, Georgia Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene. Seen here, I'm gonna say, flirting? Green is a QAnon-believing professional troll whose only motivation is making people talk about her. So let's talk about her. Late last week, Green went on a conservative podcast to complain about the House's mask mandate and made a pretty troubling comparison. You know, we can look back in a time in history where people were told to wear a gold star and they were definitely treated like second-class citizens, so much so that they were put in trains and taken to gas chambers in Nazi Germany, and this is exactly the type of abuse that Nancy Pelosi is talking about. Counterpoint, no, it's not. Green has unleashed a firestorm of criticism for her comments, so this weekend she doubled down. I said nothing wrong, and I think any, any rational Jewish person didn't like what happened in, in Nazi Germany, and any rational Jewish person doesn't like what's happening with overbearing mask mandates and overbearing vaccine policies. And I believe there are many rational Jewish people. How else would they be able to create their forest fire space lasers? She's got a lot of criticism for that, too. So this morning, she tripled down with this unparsable clickbait word pudding. Vaccinated employees get a vaccination logo just like the Nazis forced Jewish people to wear a gold star. Vaccine passports and mask mandates create discrimination against unvaxxed people who trust their immune systems to a virus that is 99% survivable. You know what I'm guessing is not 99% survivable? Comparing mask mandates to the Holocaust. But the real villains here, of course, are the GOP leaders who have sat back and said nothing for five days. Though finally, today, House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy attempted to distance himself from Green's statements, and she responded by retweeting a supporter describing Kevin McCarthy as a moron and a feckless C-word. Okay, don't know exactly which C-word that is. Conservative, Capricorn, who knows? But feckless is completely unfair. Kevin McCarthy has plenty of feck. I'd go so far as to say he's fecked in the head. He can actually go feck himself. <laughs> oh, in rich people news, let's turn to Amazon CEO and man welcoming you to his polyamorous juice making commune, <laughs> Jeff Bezos. The latest Bezos newsos is that Amazon is nearing a deal to buy the Hollywood studio MGM. That is such a billionaire move. Next, he's gonna buy Kellogg's just so he can make the MGM lion fight Tony the Tiger. The price tag is almost $9 billion and would give Amazon a treasure trove of showbiz titles, including the James Bond franchise. First up, changing Die Another Day to Die in Two Days Free with Amazon Prime. 
In fact, all of MGM's classic movies are being updated for Amazon, like The Wizard of Oz. We represent the lollipop kill, the lollipop kill, the lollipop kill. Note, the Lollipop Guild has been disbanded for unsanctioned union activity and replaced by the Association of Lollipop Independent Contractors. <laughs> and, oh wait, I'm being told that we have an official statement from MGM's chief spokesman. Are you expecting me to roar? Well, guess what the cat dragged in? Nine billion dollars. I'm rich! <laughs> Make it rain. I'm about to be a sea lion, because Daddy's getting a brand new yacht. But don't worry, I've been assured my replacement is perfectly capable of carrying on my legacy. Hakuna Matata! Roar. Roar. And Bezos really wants MGM because he's dropping that $9 billion on it, even though insiders believe the studio is only worth about $5 billion. Jeff, that's way too much. Didn't you check on the right-hand side of the product page? You could have bought it used from other sellers. So why would one of the world's richest men pay almost twice the value for a struggling movie studio that recently went bankrupt? Well, it could be that Jeff Bezos has an ongoing feud with the former president, Genghis Khan. And guess what? All the outtakes from The Apprentice are owned by MGM. Holy mother of DVD extras! The private footage of a TV billionaire is gonna belong to an actual billionaire. You see, for years, there have been allegations about outtakes from The Apprentice, where the slob father uses racist language including by actor Tom Arnold, who says he saw it personally. I've seen a compilation tape that my buddy shared where he says the N-word, he says he calls Eric uh, the, uh, uh, the R-word. He was him sitting in that chair saying the N-word, saying the C-word. He says every bad thing ever, every dirty, every offensive racist thing ever. So, on brand... And if this is true, someday soon, Bezos may release the most racist thing in the MGM catalog, other than Gone with the Wind. Because these tapes have never been made public, but now Mount Flushmore's arch nemesis owns it all, and I am here for it. Bezos could release it all on Amazon Prime as the follow-up to Fleabag, D-Bag. <laughs> oh, speaking of D-Bags, Kentucky senator and man exaggerating how many friends he has Rand Paul. Yesterday, the senator received a suspicious package filled with white powder. It was suspicious because it didn't come from Don Jr. <laughs> the package included a threatening message with an image of the senator in a neck brace and with a cast on his arm above text reading, I'll finish what your neighbor started, you mother <laughs> The message refers to a 2017 incident in which Rand Paul stepped off a riding lawnmower as the man who lived next door charged and tackled him. Of course, Neighbors get in fights all the time. We all remember that one episode of Home Improvement. Now, let me be clear about something. I'm no fan of Rand Paul. He tried to sell me weed backstage here one night. But there is never any excuse for violence or threats of any kind at any time against anyone for any reason. That is not how we settle conflicts in a free society. We do that with lip sync battles. LL Cool J decides the winner. It's in the Constitution. Authorities don't know who sent the package, but Rand Paul is blaming pop singer Richard Marks. Wait, the what? <laughs> the guy who sang Endless Summer Nights? This is the most unexpected act of violence since Hall and Oates threw baby Jessica down a well. Here's Rand Paul's chain of logic. Sunday, Marks tweeted, if I ever meet Rand Paul's neighbor, I'm going to hug him and buy him as many drinks as he can consume. That led Rand Paul to complain just this weekend, Richard Marks called for violence against me, and now we receive this powder-filled letter. Called for violence? It was a call to buy somebody a drink, but still, I get it. Richard Marks has over 300,000 followers on Twitter. I believe they're called Marxists. And with that kind of social media platform, you have to be careful about what you say. Still, to think that Richard Marks is dangerous is just ridiculous. I mean, when you consider all the problems... <laughs> Is it Steve? What? Grammy award-winning artist who topped the charts in four different decades, Chicago's very own Richard Marks. How did you break into my broadcast? Oh, Stevie, wherever you go, whatever you do, I will be right here waiting for you. Along with my 300,000 Twitter followers, 
I call them the Richards. Okay, but you're not inciting violence against anyone, are you? Of course not. All I want is world domination. And I will not rest until Richard Marx's reach is limitless, available at richardmarx.com. Okay, that's a little scary. Aren't you worried that by talking about your plans for world domination on national TV, world leaders are going to band together to stop you? They'd have to catch me first. At London's Union Chapel, September 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Tickets available at richardmarks.com. Wait a second, Richard. <laughs> are you using this controversy just to promote yourself? You got me, Stevie. It's part of my evil plan that you can learn all about in my new memoir, Stories to Tell. You can pre-order it at richardmarks.com. Richard Marks, everybody. Dot com! We got a great show for you tonight. My guest is Gail King, but when we come back, global supergroup BTS and I teach you some cool new hand gestures. Love. <laughs>